Hello everyone. So I'm gonna start this uh, review with a informal uh, riding footage and uh, I'm riding to my local park because uh, I'm gonna do a uh, review of this uh, electric folding bike and this is the DYU D3F. Um, very excited to talk about this bike because I have been commuting on this bike for uh, close to two months now and uh, it has been uber reliable so I want to share with you my experience and some of the bike specs to help you guys make a decision on whether you should uh, get this bike for your commuting or leisure riding purpose okay so almost at the place that I usually do the bike reviews I'm gonna stop by take the bike down all right guys so finally found a quiet place to um, properly review this bike okay I am just gonna start with some basic spec of this DYU D3F okay so the rear hub is a 250 watt rear hub motor and uh, um, in terms of the speed I get around 12.5 to 13.5 miles per hour uh, maximum speed okay so that's when I twist the throttle all the way um, to the end and uh, I usually have a 2.5 mile one-way commute so my daily commute total mileage is around five miles and as I said I have been actually riding this bike for um, almost two months now almost every day and uh, uh, the bike has a usable usable full throttle commute range on the flat surface of around 15 to 17 miles um, so that's a range you're gonna get if you are not doing pedal assist you're just twisting your throttle all the way to the max and going always on the max speed of flat surface um, if you are using pedal assist mode which means you don't twist the throttle and you just pedal your bike um, the bike's motor is gonna kick in and help you go a little further and with that you get more than 20 hours of commutes um, you know mileage and uh, um, the bike is very lightweight okay so it only weighs about 38 pounds and uh, um, to put this into perspective your average uh, there's a little squirrel uh, behind me that's trying to make a noise I'm sorry guys if it if he's louder than me um, <laughs> so to put it in perspective um, a beach a beach uh, cruiser commuter um, that's that's like kind of like a low rider kind of a looking bike that the bike weighs usually around 35 to 35 pounds and if you're using a hybrid bike it's usually 27 to 30 pounds uh, if you're using a mountain bike for commute uh, it's usually more than 30 pounds okay so put this bike in perspective it's actually um not that heavy okay and it's actually quite tiny okay um very very easy actually extremely easy uh, to put this bike into your trunk um, it's actually easier to put this bike in my trunk than my day home Mu SL which I reviewed you know uh, last year which was my favorite foldable bike uh, of course non-electric ones anyway uh, but since I have been riding this bike I I am thinking about selling every my every other bike that I have and only keeping this for commute um, the other bike or my other bike that I'm not gonna sell is my road bike and I think that they, the DYU uh, D3F is probably good enough to replace every other option you have in terms of commuting besides a road bike okay so um, let's let's go closer take a closer look at the bike okay so um, in the front you have a fairly short uh, I would say fairly narrow um, handlebar okay uh, this bar is probably just as narrow as um, like a, a scooter uh, electric scooter and uh, also I would highly advise you guys get an electric folding bike instead of a scooter for commuting because it just provides so much so much more comfort and uh, the plus side is if you ever run out of electricity on an electric folding bike still have the option of um, pedaling yourself okay so as again um, as I said before it's a 250 volt uh, rear hub and it's a single gear setup so uh, in terms of pedaling 
the front chainring is actually pretty small. Um, and on the back, I think this is a 10 tooth, um, you know, rear cassette. So our, our rear cog. Um, but when you're pedaling, um, the hardest you can pedal and the bike, the maximum speed of the bike is probably around 13 miles per hour to 15 miles per hour, depending on how powerful your leg is. But again, the bike have a very, very short um, crank arm. So because the bike is small, so they didn't design the crank arm to be as long. So you have more clearance to the ground uh, when you're pedaling. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, the bike comes with a extremely i mean extremely short seat post that that's the first thing you're gonna do if you're an adult and if you want to use this to commute the first first thing you're gonna do is buy a new seat post okay this one i have is a 450 millimeter seat post um this seat post will bring the bikes um geometries you know in line with any other commuting bike so you're gonna feel like um you're riding a regular bike now if you don't ever change that seat post when you buy the bike uh you're gonna suffer very very badly okay um so that's the first thing i would suggest you guys to do very first uh is to change the seat post the stock seat post to do to get a uh a really long one okay the 450 millimeter is perfect um, again, this bike is 38 pounds and it supports rider's weight up to 265 pounds. Now, I am a fairly light. I'm 148 pounds. Um, and when I'm on this bike, the average speed I give you is for my weight. Um, they designed a speed limit. I guess the speed doesn't go as fast. You know, it doesn't go faster than 15.5 miles per hour. So if you're lighter than me, you might get to 15.5. And if you're heavier than me, you might get a slightly slower speed on this bike. Um, but uh, the bike is already uh, uh, super fast, um, you know, to start with. Okay, so um, just to give you another perspective in terms of the riding speed, I I have my Daehong Mu SL, which is a 20-inch folding bike from Daehong. It's one of Daehong's lightest 20-inch um, folding bike. And I get the average speed of around 30 miles per hour, you know, just doing regular pedaling on that bike. Uh, if I want to go faster, I can, but I'm going to be using a lot more energy and I can probably get to 15 to 16 miles per hour uh, on that bike. That's the hardest I can pedal. On this bike, um, I don't have to pedal. I just twist the throttle and it goes to, you know, 13.5 miles per hour, which is pretty amazing. And uh, um, it, the speed is consistent throughout my 2.5 miles commute, which is amazing and which is the reason why I think there's no point for me to keep my other bikes, my mountain bikes, my hybrid bikes, and my folding bike. I'm gonna sell all of those bikes, okay? Um, just because how good this DYU D3F is. Now I did mention about the safety feature. So the bike has a mechanical uh, disc brake front and back. And uh, um, it's not a brand name disc brake um, and it's mechanical. Um, does it work? Yes, it actually works extremely well. Um, as long as it's not a raining condition, um, the mechanical disc brake is going to provide a fairly good stopping distance. Now, because of the inherent weight of this bike, uh, despite the mechanical disc brake providing maximum amount of braking power, um, there is still a fairly long braking distance compared to, uh, say, if you have a road bike with a really good group set, say, like my Dura my uh, S-Works um, road bike with Dura Ace um, uh, front and back caliper brakes, those brakes brakes much more efficient um, than this bike. Why? Because um, that Dura Ace um, on the S-Works, um, the bike itself is extremely light. It's about 18 pounds, which is half the weight of this. So the, the braking performance um, of this bike don't expect you know stellar performance only because this bike is much heavier even though it features a very very good mechanical disc brake now the disc brake is is again as i mentioned non-branded so um, there's no brand on this so it's a generic brand um, the lever on the bike um, again generic however i th it, the lever is actually um, 
also controlling some other functions of the bike. So you you really you really cannot upgrade um, this lever even if you want to get a uh, a better lever um, for your bike. Okay. So the lever, don't think about it. It's it's fixed. It's non replaceable. However, if you do want to get better quality mechanical brakes, consider the Avid uh, BB7 brakes. Those brakes are probably gonna be a better performer than the stock one. You know that's generic. Okay. The bike, uh, in terms of convenient features, it comes with a kickstand, uh, which is slightly adjustable in terms of the height of uh, when the bike is, you know, lays to the side, but it comes pre-adjusted. So I'm pretty happy about this kickstand. It actually works extremely well. Um, and uh, the bike also uh, initially came with a rear disc, uh, rear brake light. However, that brake light is pretty crappy, and it's powered by a button cell battery. So I just started using my cycle light, um, you know, rear light, which is much, much better option and it's extremely bright. So very safe to commute at night, even during daytime as well. Another safety feature um, is the integrated front LED light. Now this light is activated by pressing this, this button right here. So if you press it with the power on, as you can see, the power is running out. Turn on with four bars. Uh, the f the fourth bar means you know it's it's over eighty percent full. And if you go to the bottom of the green bar and it starts flashing, that means your battery runs out. So it's got four stages um, of the indicator in terms of the battery power. Extremely simple as well. So only two buttons that you press. Okay, this one controls the power and the power only. So if you press this, it turns off the bike's electric system. And if you press it again, it turns on the electric system, which means the battery is now engaged and ready to, to uh, if you twist the throttle, it's gonna move forward. Okay, so throttle is right here. This side is um, doesn't feature any function, so it doesn't move at all. Um, also comes with a little bell. This bell is, is okay. It's not the best uh, quality made bell, so I would highly suggest get a better quality bell if you can. Um, but this one works in a pinch, okay. Um, and uh, so, again, well, back to the the light over here. So you're gonna long press this with the battery turn on, and it's gonna turn on this light after about three seconds. Okay. So, and again, it's actually a very, very bright uh, front LED light. So provides a fairly safe uh, night riding experience, uh, if you ask me. So this integrated front light is, is much more useful than the back light that they give you, okay? So if you press it uh, again for like probably around three, four seconds, and the light turns off, okay? Um, the wheels, let's talk about the wheels. So the wheels are, non-removable it's not a quick release type which i think is good so it prevents people from stealing your wheels um this one is you know all lugged uh if you want to remove it with tools you can but it's it's not easily removable or serviceable um i can see some bearings uh hidden on both sides but uh, the wheel itself is 14 inches and it's actually pneumatic wheel which means it's gonna uh, it needs air to be pumped in here have two schrader valves, valves front and back um, air pressure is around 35 to 45 i believe um, so it provides a a very comfortable ride compared to you know if you're riding a electric scooter um, your ride is going to be much more harsh and uh, compared to riding electric scooter your advantage of using a electric folding bike is you get a extremely comfortable seat that's actually built right into the frame not like some of the you know cheesy looking electric bikes with a you know makeshift seat put on top it's extremely dangerous actually now this bike i consider this bike to be extremely safe with all the building safety features and everything else the pedal uh it's pretty cool uh, the pedal is actually um let's see if i can move it so it's foldable i can't do it with one hand Basically, the pedal actually folds 90 degrees. Uh, when you put it in the bike trunk for, uh, in the car trunk for storage, um, you can fold the pedal fairly easily to save even more space. Uh, in terms of the, the bottom bracket, I don't really know what kind of bottom bracket it is. 
um, I'm, I'm thinking it could be a proprietary bottom bracket because um, this tube seems awfully small to me compared to a standard uh, bottom bracket um, tube size from a hybrid bike or maybe a mountain bike. Um, and it's a square taper, again, very short square taper crank arm. Um, so those are things that you have to, you know, take into consideration because the crank arm is, is short, so you can't really do um, much longer, like a faster uh, pedal stroke. Okay, so that's why your uh, average speed doesn't go as high as you want. Um, another feature, or actually comes with um, comes with those, uh, how do you say, the fenders, and uh, um, supposedly the fenders to keep to keep if you're riding in the, the raining condition, which I did ride a couple times in the rain. Um, it doesn't really work okay so it looks kind of cool but um the water actually still splashes all the way to the back of the bike and uh, uh makes my pants and my clothes super wet so not as useful um if you can find a longer fender it's probably a more useful um addition uh in terms of the fender in the front um pretty much same thing it barely does nothing and uh the water still splashes all over as you can see from my last rainy ride, um, dust and uh, rocks and dirt just get picked up and easily stick onto the bike. Um, I didn't ride in the pouring rain, just a small rain, but still it's, it's kind of annoying and I, I wouldn't advise you guys riding this bike in the rain because again, mechanical brakes, disc brakes, they don't provide as good of a stopping power compared to hydraulic brakes um, in the wet conditions. So if it's wet, just try not to ride your bike and uh, just uh, play it safe, okay? Um, the battery is a 10 amp hour um, lithium iron cell battery, charges in about six hours. So every time uh, when I get to work, um, I put this bike onto the charger and usually when I finish with um, you know work and ready to go home, uh, the, the bike is fully charged. And uh, again, as I said before, my commute is five miles each day and this bike can go at least 15 to 17 miles so i can ride this bike for all for like more than three days without charging it for my commute however i do charge it every day just to make sure i you know something unexpected i have extra juice to run around um so keep that in mind um if your commute is less than i would say uh let's see if if your commute if your total commute um is less than 15 miles I would say it's possible that you can ride this bike to your work get it fully charged in about six hours and uh, go home fully charged and it's gonna run another you know 15 miles on, on full throttle um, if it if your commute is shorter than 15 miles it, you can definitely you can definitely ride this bike very reliably every day for your commute okay that's why I think you know the electric folding bike is really the best option um, in terms of your your commuting um, tool and uh, um, you can see there is a little notch over here they kind of designed this for you to lift the bike however um, it's not very well designed so the bike's uh, central weight is actually kind of here so you can't really put your hand in here when you try to lift the bike um, so that's something also to take into, take into consideration um, as I said the bike just needs a few um, little modifications and it's it's an extremely extremely fun and reliable bike to ride around with um, and I would highly highly suggest you guys uh, seriously give this DYU D3F a consideration so um, how do you ride the bike is um, pretty simple now you have the power turned on by pressing the power button and uh, if you twist the throttle, the bike is going to move, okay? The smaller you twist, the, the slower it moves. And it's actually got a pretty cool cruise control function, okay? So to activate the cruise control, you have to be riding the bike with the throttle fully twisted. With the throttle fully twisted, you're going to press this button to lock into the speed of the cruise control, okay? So usually that means, you know, 13.5 miles max. And you're going to be cruising at that speed without having to twist the throttle which is really really convenient okay so um towards the end of the video i'm going to show you guys how quick 
it is um, to fold this bike to your trunk and ready to you know ready to drive away or ready to ride away um, it's actually faster than my Daehong Mule SL which is already a fast folding bike with three folding actions this one um, you just have to do two folding actions and it's it's folded and it folds to an extremely compact package so I was really surprised um, when I actually uh, started finding out how cool how much better the DYU D3F is compared to my Daehong Mule SL um, yes I'm pleasantly surprised so that pretty much sums up about how awesome this bike is. I'm just going to tell you guys some uh, essential changes that you have to uh, make uh, if you're planning on buying this bike for serious commuting use or just for joy rides. Okay? Um, so first thing first is what happens when the battery runs out. Okay? So the battery, um, again, as I said, about 17 miles um, if you're being frugal um, on your throttle and uh, the battery would display a flashing green that means the battery is gonna run out or it's gonna die pretty soon at that moment you still have fairly small uh, you still have probably like 10 miles per hour of a uh, speed uh, if you twist if you still twisting the throttle when the battery is completely dead it's not gonna move forward you have to do use your manual pedaling now is it hard um it's not that hard you can still pedal it and keep a speed of about 10 miles per hour okay so 10 miles per hour just remember that on the flat surface this bike comfortable 10 miles per hour without electric assist okay um so that's what you gotta do if you have if you live in a hilly situation uh, the pedaling is not gonna uh, help much because it's very very hard to pedal upwards uh, just because of the very short crank arm um, length and the very um, very weird gearing on, on the single speed setup it's more it's more for backup it's not really designed to for you to pedal you know constantly okay so keep that in mind now the second thing and very important is that you really really need to get a aftermarket seat post the original seat post again as I mentioned now the the size is 28.6 millimeters and times uh, the length of the 450 millimeter the original seat post is extremely short so uh, it's it's not gonna do it if um, if you are kind of probably taller than uh, 5 5 okay so if you're taller than 5 5 this seat post is not gonna work you need a longer seat post all right so just got home and I want to show you guys how quick and easy it is to take the bike out fold and unfold pretty much ready to go and uh, so this is how you fold so unfold it to get it ready to ride and uh, every time when it gets to work like usually I kick the kickstand up and I'm just gonna put everything back and as you can see a very easy two-step fold so you fold this down and you put the seat uh, the seat post down okay and uh, this is pretty much ready to be put in the trunk so all I do is dropping my trunk and I have a fairly you know, medium-sized sedan and fits in perfectly okay so that's that's how easy and convenient it is to um, use this e-bike for commute <laughs>